So I'm, my full name is Coven Deep Virdi. Uh, you can call me Coven, easiest way to remember, K with an oven. And um, for the last few years, I've been making interactive and public art. And more recently, I've been thinking about how to bring the internet into that. So how to make works for a wider public. Um, and it's really exciting for me to be here right now because the JavaScript community has been a big influence in the values I have in making this work, especially in like, the emphasis of, of building openly and collaboratively. Um, and so I tweeted out some links for some of the demos. And uh, later on, we'll, we'll try them out. Maybe they'll work, maybe they won't. But either way, we'll have some fun. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I work at a company called Embedly. I'm coming down from Boston. And um, what we do is it's an API for embedding media. Uh, so uh, people use it in their apps or websites to create media mashups or expressive media stuff. Open source this tool recently, Player.js, for working with um, movie players or sound players. Uh, a few years ago, I began a public art group called New American Public Art with a few collaborators. And whatever we make, it must follow two principles. One, it's interactive. So whatever we make must respond to you. And two, it's public. If you go to the piece, you must be able to see it or engage with it uh, for free. You, know, you, you shouldn't have to pay anything for it. And we, we did this because we realized that there's a huge opportunity in cities and public spaces for this kind of work, to create a platform for conversation or just to have fun and meet new people uh, and just more citizen engagement. I want to tell you about this group, the Austin Foundation, recently I've been uh, participating in. And it's because yesterday a lot of you made some pretty awesome projects. Um, what they do is there's several chapters all around the states, and once a month, many of them give $1,000 grants. So if you need some funding for materials, um, send your project idea to them, and then maybe you'll get funded. Uh, it's not only like open tech projects, but just you know, various art projects or socially, socially conscious projects or maybe business prototypes. So on making interactive and collaborative art. Um, traditionally, like when we think of traditional art, we think about going to a gallery and seeing a painting, and we take a picture of it, but we, we draw meaning from it, and we could talk about it. With interactive art, it's more of a two-way street. So here's a piece by Daniel Rosen, which I think is really interesting. There's a camera on it and a whole lattice of motors, and they move. They move these little objects that are attached there to create what looks like a silhouette. And we can zoom in a bit further, so here's so I'm just moving around. It gives you like a little, you get a dialogue with the piece. You can explore it a little bit. And when you look closer, it's all of these bits of trash moving around. This is really strange. But it's something that's, that's a bit curious. You can explore it a little bit. And I think that's interesting. Uh, so we move to another piece that, that I find really interesting. It's by Design.io. Uh, not only is this interactive, but you could do it with groups of people. Here people are moving around and, and stuff. And you realize they're controlling these animations. And I love that, that here you have this space of play, and you're, you're, you, you can go with somebody you know or somebody you've never met before, and all of a sudden, like, everything's a bit more whimsical and silly and fun. Uh, I'll do that later. Um, so that's Design.io. Uh, you guys remember that beach ball? What, what was going on, like, a couple nights ago? Like, we could have gone for hours. Um, <laughs> that's not an art piece, but, like, I drew so, I, I just loved it so much. Hours of entertainment, what was going on? The, the boundaries of that were really permeable. You could join it, you could leave it, like whenever you wanted, but there was a lot of smiling and laughing, and I thought that was really beautiful. Um, whenever I make a piece, that's what I want to get to somehow. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a couple installations that I've done, and then I'll move more into the internet-based stuff. The first one uh, plays with the metaphor of a dinner table that you can get a, gather around and you know, have a conversation. Uh, and Lego, something that you can use to build, construct uh, together or alone. In this case, our dinner table was this giant beach ball we covered in fiberglass and magnets, and our Legos were little metal pieces. And we took it to a festival, and we told people we've discovered this strange planet with these strong magnetic properties, and we need their help to build civilizations. And some people jumped right into it, some people didn't, but then, you know, soon they wanted to. Uh, but it was cool to see how this, this could become like, like a sandbox. This could become a world to explore. Um, someone brought a Godzilla and put magnets on its feet that could live on the planet and destroy some of the buildings. Uh, you would see things other people made. Maybe you want to copy it. Maybe you'd want to add to it. Um, you could destroy things. You could construct with a friend or meet new people as you're, as you're working on these pieces. Um, and one of my favorite things was that like, families could get involved too. So here you have three generations. 
uh, the daughter, the father, and the grandfather all like playing with this piece, and they're smiling, they're having fun. This is cool. Uh, here's another piece. This is a really simple prototype. Um, just a, actually, I'll plug this in. It's um, a microphone connected to an LED strip, and the louder the sounds that it picks up, the um, yeah, there you go. The the more it glows. And so there's many, like, this is very flexible. You could put it in a club, you could put it in a gallery, you can attach it to a sculpture. I'm coming from Boston. It gets really cold in the winter, so we put it outside. Maybe it'd make the winter better. And uh, it picks up the ambient sound, and so if you yell... <laughs> it starts to glow. And it's not really okay to yell in public, but this thing's like, you can yell, it's totally fine. Okay. <laughs> um, so what, what is it that, that, I'm, that I'm seeing that happens? Okay, like people, this brings people together. This makes, wherever we install it, it makes the space feel more welcoming. And then like for groups of people participating, they can get more creative and they can get more playful. And I feel like you get, you can build meaning together with this sort of work. So now we're looking at this medium of the web where there's so many tools for interact, interactivity and also collaboration. Can I, can I make those, those similar experiences? Can I, can I bring them into the web? Similarly, like the only way you could yell at that LED thing is if you were there. Like, but what if I connected to the internet so now you could yell at your computer and then maybe it would light up? So the browser is a canvas. All of these libraries that are being written, they're being open source, I can, I can download and I can use. All the APIs available I can use. This is a pretty powerful canvas. It's network too. I'm making this in JavaScript. This, this, you know, there was a reason for this. The community is so strong. If I had a question, I could find the answer. Or I, somebody I know would know where the answer is. Um, the ubiquity of it. I create something for my computer, and it'll work on your computer, and it'll work on other ones if I tweak it a bit. Um, and just a general interest. You make something crazy, and like, people want to know what's going on. They, they're, they're interested in what's possible with these technologies. So the, my first like, kind of foray into this, of like public art, putting the internet to it, is inspired by a piece by Kusama. There's this room with furniture in it, painted completely white. And when you walked in, you were given stickers, and you could put a sticker wherever you wanted. And I love the trust the artist gave in this. Like, yeah, you can, you can leave your mark here, it's okay. So what would that be like on the web? Okay, cool, like I could draw circles on this web page, then I can add web sockets so like I could see the circles you draw. Sweet, cool. All right, so this is like, this is familiar to us, we, we, all, we, all, we all get this, but like, for some people it feels like magic, you know, and that, that's kind of fun. And then you get these interesting patterns like faces and circle patterns. But really, once it's on a screen, then you could do a lot of different things with it. You could project it on a building. And like, the scale is suddenly so different. It's not about my hand and my, and my head anymore. It's like my hands and my head. It's like my whole body. Like you walk in front of this and you feel it. And somebody walks by and rarely do you see something of this scale in a city that you can change. But now you can. You just go to this website on your phone and you could change it. I wasn't even here. This was in Grand Rapids. I was in Somerville. I went on the website and I changed it too. And it was wonderful. And I took like screenshots. And it was, felt really good. Um, here's another building we projected on and some of the patterns. You know, someone wrote a K because I made it. Uh, and here's a happy face. Someone started drawing hair on it. Help. Um, I don't know why someone was desiring help through this. There's other channels. Um, <laughs> like different patterns like that, a happy face. Um, so we can try it if you want to. Um, so like, if you, wow, okay, yay. Okay, cool. So what's happening? <laughs> this is all of us doing this together. And it's working. Great, you're in my talk with me. <laughs> Maybe I'll return, oh my God, this is so many, yay. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm gonna leave that open. Uh, <laughs> okay, so now screens, now objects. Um, this is a sweet LED piece by Leo Villarreal. And you go through it and there's all this beautiful shimmering. I wanna be able to change that in some way. So got an LED grid, hooked it up to the browser, um, node serial, and all right, now I'm drawing on it. Okay, once it's working in the browser, Cool, okay, I built a housing, so now I could take it on the airplane. It doesn't look as sketchy. Um, and then I could draw on it with a phone. Like, now it's with a phone. Okay, now one phone can draw with it. Then I can get multiple phones. Sweet, now we have a collaborative, like, piece of art that 
we can all access with our phones. And you can imagine this in a storefront. And like that storefront, that area suddenly becomes so much more activated. And this is just a small prototype. There's like many other possibilities. I'm going to return to this kind of stuff later on in the talk. Now I'm going to go to other weird internet art stuff. Um, Tumblr as a medium for art. GIFs are popular on Tumblr. I was making some GIFs and posting them. Many of them didn't work out, but some of them did. And that like triggers these neural synapses and you just want to make more. Um, but I didn't have time to make so many more. Like it takes a while to make one that's compelling. So I just set up a script to make them. These like really minimal gradients because I found them very soothing. And I'd post them every three hours. I was generating them with the canvas and then using Phantom to auto post them or to, to auto generate them and then I'd post that. Um, then I wake up one morning and it's like, whoa, this got a lot of followers. This is doing way better than I am. What does this mean about me on Tumblr? Um, and you see these numbers and they make you feel great, but then you look at it a little bit further and then I saw comments on one of the reblogs. If you're like me and often feel overstimulated by visual stimuli, I recommend this blog, like the blog I put with all those graphics. Um, basically, it's just really nice. And I read this and I was like, wow, that's really kind of you to say. And I'm also really glad that I made your day a little bit better. We're both really happy right now. <laughs> and I don't know you and you don't know me, but you know, things are going to be OK. Um, so this uses P5. It's uh, rewriting processing in JavaScript. Highly recommend to check it out if you want to get into creative coding. It's amazing. Uh, Canvas and Phantom, of course. Um, all right, so now we have this webcam. We take selfies with it. All right, what can I do with that? I was looking at pixel sorting. Yesterday, we learned a little bit about sorting. So I was looking at pixel sorting. <laughs> And uh, like glitch art. So I was like, what if I pixel sorted my face? And there's my face. Boom, pixel sorting. OK. So it's like abstracted. I don't know. I started thinking really deeply about it. I was like, all right, this is the end of 2013 when I made this. It was the year of the selfie. But 2013's over. Welcome to another year. Like, take your photo and obliterate it. Boom, cool art. And uh, here's, here's like what the app looked like. And you get this GIF of your face. And so people like started taking. Like, I put it out online, people shared it, and then so just like random people started sending me their faces getting obliterated. And um, it was like younger folks, elder folks, but then also like, I like this one because it was like with the cat, so it was like cat selfie obliteration. <laughs> and then here was another artist who liked to do visual effects in the browser, uh, Forrest. And so he saw what I had made, and then he made this and sent it to me, and then we met each other. And it was cool, like, or we met each other online, and that's always fun to like make and then dialogue through that. Um, so that used Canvas, uh, get user media for the image, um, web workers to make the pixel sorting faster, and like the best pixel sort library. Um, <laughs> uh, so Forrest and I like later on worked together on this other piece. Um, this JavaScript facial tracking library came out. What? So we were like, let's use that. Um, and we just added this, these crazy visuals on it, like circles and things like that. It made no sense, but it was really stimulating. And uh, we added like little screenshots in the background, um, and we just put it up for, for Art Hack Day. And it was fun. Like, what's more fun than the piece? It's really simple. What's more fun is seeing how people responded to it. It was like when they would, they would try to get the algorithm to recognize them. And then once they were recognized, it's like, boom, they were the chosen one. And then they'd start making faces at it. And then like, they would just forget about everyone else. And then their friends would like, kind of nudge them and try to be the chosen one. And then this is like, the best metric of success. Like, someone took a selfie with it. I was like, yes. Um, so that's like, get user media. CLM tracker is the facial recognition tool. Canvas. Um, all right, beyond the web camera using the Kinect. Uh, is it possible to stream buffers, visual buffers, to the browser? Um, I tried it with Socket.io. Things got really slow. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I was recommended to use WebSocket streams. And then it worked. And here's just the visual buffer. Um, and then the next question was, can you do simple computer vision stuff in, in the browser? Can you do smoothing? Um, so here's smoothing over, over space, but then also between frames over time. And it was working. And things weren't slowing down too much. Wow, cool. Um, next, edge detection. Can I, do, can I do edge detection? Yes, it is possible. Um, this piece was like less about art and more about is it possible. Uh, and so it was working. And then we, I put it up at the show. And like, this is, I kind of see as V1. But like, you, can, you can imagine like, you can hook up videos to this. You could put sounds to it. Anything that's available in the browser, you can now use, to the, use with this sort of thing. Um, but like, you could get edge detection, live edge detection in the browser. Cool. Uh, so that was with Node Connect and WebSocket streams, and again, just Canvas. I, le I learned about, more about Canvas earlier, so I can, even, I can make this even more efficient. Um, 
I like to play music, so definitely I'd, I'd mess around with web audio toys. Um, it's fun to do like little, little projects. Uh, so when I got a leap, like clearly I would make a theremin like everyone else did. Um, so this is a... Can we get it louder? Oh, thanks. Um, so that's, that's this one, like, cool. And here's like adding some filtering. And this, this is fun, like maybe a little stressful. But like it was hard to really share this. So, so I was saying, okay, what, what else can you do? Okay, minimal, minimal graphics. Minimal graphics in the browser with sounds, cool. Okay, now it's gonna be, I swear the next one is a lot happier sounding. But for some reason I was using D3 for this. You, you don't use D3 for this kind of application. I don't know why I did, it's like learning and stuff. Um, so that was the stressful one. Here's one that's more relaxing. nice moment we're sharing. So like, you know, I could share that and see, see what happened. But really, like, none of this stuff really, really compelled me until this came out. This came out recently. Like a month ago, it like went viral, and it was like the... Wow. <laughs> cool. It's growing. Um, this came out, and, and it was amazing. You press a key, and sounds happen, and visuals happen, and then you could just play beats. Um, but the real thing, the, the, the real compelling part about it is that it would also work on mobile, on the mobile browser. Um, and before, when, when you wanted to do stuff that was really low latency, you'd have to go native, but now you don't have to. Now there's a whole new set of possibilities for, for mobile synth apps and, and quick gestures that you could start exploring. And this, this was incredible, because like now I could share it and people can play with it, and it's, it's even more engaging than, than you know, just on, on this. Um, so like, you know, simple, simple one-off experiments like arpeggiator stuff. Um, or taking like previous apps that I made, like this one has um, your mouse position becomes like the input for a synthesizer. And uh, why did that stop? Okay, that's done. Uh, and it's, it's like really minimal, but... Um, Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, um, so there's something that would happen with this, where like when people started synchronizing with each other, it started to get like you start to see that behind this dot and this simple sound, there's a person, um, and and that was really amazing. Like like when when two people start to synchronize, you um you start to form a language between each other. And this, this taught me something new, that you can create these minimal spaces of, of, of expression, but really start to connect with somebody else. And it wasn't just me that felt it. Like, I, I went on Twitter to see people talking about it, and someone wrote, I just harmonized with somebody, but I don't know who. Is that weird? And someone else responded, it's natural and beautiful. I was like, oh, wow, cool. This is, you feel this. And so I'm imagining like all these different little playgrounds that are very, very minimal, very simple. You don't even use, you don't, you're not using words, but where you can connect with people in a very deep and kind of intimate way. Oh yeah, we, we did the demo. Maybe we could do it again later, okay. Um, so that's Socket.io Web Audio API. Um, I'm gonna end with something I've been working on most recently. Um, and it was kind of taking this idea of open web art more seriously and being very open about the process and just sharing about the process. Uh, and the idea was that you'd have some sort of projection and you'd have your phones, and then when you move them around, something would happen there. Uh, it was very broad. Um, I didn't really know what it would look like, but I knew that I didn't want the, like, this tapping. I wanted like moving, so it would be more about your body and not about looking at a screen. Um, and so this first test was just gestures to sound, and it's just like totally hacky looking thing. Um, And that was like, that's like the best icebreaker ever. Like, people ask me, what do I do? And I'm like, this is what I do. Like, cool. <laughs> and, I, and I posted on Facebook, sounding all serious, like, try it out. And um, a few minutes later, I get a response. Holy crap, I just annoyed the entire room for 10 minutes of bliss. 
<laughs> OMG, just hold it on and run around away from people chasing you, LOL. <laughs> Cool, so maybe there's something about this. But that was possible because he, like, they didn't have to download an app. I just shared this website and that browser supports web audio and the accelerometer and they could just use it right away and then share it with their friends and I love that. Oh, that. oh here's that video from before. Okay, now it stopped. Okay. Um, so, oh yeah. Uh, so then over the next few, all right. Uh, you know, someone showed me a vine of it on their laptop instead of their phone. Cool. Didn't expect that. You just take your laptop. Um, and then because it looked so bad, I think people like hacked on it, made it their own, built a better UI, and made it collaborative. And I loved that. I loved like that it was comfortable to add to it. Um, but then I worked on it, made the sound a bit prettier, and, uh, and added some visual component. So like you shake it, and then there's like these bursts. Um, and we should play with it. Oh, wait, here's another video of like, you take it to a show and then shake it around. Um, and then like, one of the people at the show was so pumped about it. Like, I go to shows and I just want to be a part of it. And now I can be more a part of it. And I like that he felt that way. Um, so we could try this out if you want to. So turn up your sound and uh, go to this website. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I'm, I'm really amazed that that other sound thing worked. That was cool. It got a little crazy though. Oh, that's awesome. This is getting beautiful. All right. Um, so now we're on this page, and this is going to, like, oh, oh, man, I should have loaded this earlier. So you have a color on your phone right now, and that's the color of, like, the screen, of, like, whatever this burst is. And it's hard to see where you are right now, but I think I'm the green one. I don't know. But anyway, that, that's all of us doing this thing together and making these cool sounds with our phones. Cool. Oh, wow, this is still going up. Whoa, who did this? Who was this? Who was, oh my god, someone did this, that's so cool. You rock, you're the best. Um, sweet. Wow, I've never had so many people on it, that's fun, that's fun. I think I'll make it brighter or something. I, I gotta, you, gotta, you gotta test for scale like this, so, but that's cool. You don't have to stop. I, I kinda like this in the background. So that's, um, this uses a bunch of things, uh, web audio, um, uh, the, the accelerometer, of course, and then um, Sparks is on top of three, and it's a particle system library, really fun to play with. Okay, so we all can send each other messages and get to know each other on the internet, like it's a medium, and just in the same way as before, I was like curious of, all right, we have public space, we have public art, how can this be a means to, to know each other in really beautiful ways? This can happen on the web as well, and, and, and we've seen it so many times, and that's kind of like what I'm interested in, in exploring more. Um, I realized why I'm so passionate about this at an earlier talk in the conference. Uh, there was a line that really resonated with me. It was, in, it was in Jen's talk. Create a space for people to feel safe to be people. And I want us to think about this again because it's really beautiful. When we were all hitting this ball in the air and laughing and being weird, like we felt okay. And it felt okay to be weird. And I think when, when you feel okay being silly and playful, uh, you feel safer just being who you are. And so like with this work, all right, how do you do that in public spaces? How do you do that bringing internet to public spaces? How do you just do it on the web? Um, and when you, start, when you start seeing things that work, it gives us new channels to get to know each other, friends who you've known forever, like, or, or new strangers. Um, it gives you new ways to be expressive and playful with each other. And, and most of all, what's important to me is it gives you like, new ways to find joy, new ways to find happiness, new ways to laugh and smile together. And for me, it's, that's one of the most exciting pursuits in exploring new technologies. And that's what I'm, I'm looking to do with, with JavaScript and networked apps and, and the browser as a canvas. Thanks. Um. And I you know, obviously couldn't do it alone, so these are some, some of the, 
the collaborators for this work. I'm going to post these slides online. You should definitely check out their, their art as well. Um, but I'd love to, to talk about ideas and possibilities. I've learned so much about building more openly um, this conference, and I, and I want to learn more. And um, So let's, let's talk. Let's hang out later on tonight. Thanks so much. Okay, sorry, that's two rounds of applause. You don't have to do the other one. Okay. <laughs>